To all the geeks and nerds out there, today I'd like to show you my brand new design for a 1.14.4 Villager Trading Hall. This is going to be pretty cool, pretty epic, but before we get into how it works and how to build it, let me give you a quick demo of how to use it. And here is our trading hall, and it's made up of a few different modules, so let's show you one at a time uh, so you get the idea of how this thing works, and then, uh, then I'll show you how to build it. So here we are. Uh, the main bit, I suppose, is this bit here, which is where we have all of our villagers, and they are ready to trade. They've all got their own workstations, uh, so that is all set up. And of course, these villagers have got heavy discounts. We have got to the lowest trades possible uh, with all of these villagers, and I'll show you how to do all of that uh, in a second. So obviously here, now once you've got your villagers in here, we can trade with them, that's all good. But I guess the question is how we get them. We'll come on to that in a second uh, but just to mention that uh, I've made this uh, this trading hall just in a straight line with 10 spaces now you can make this as big or as small as you like uh, there is no limit and also you can make this in any shape it's going to be an L shape or a U shape or you can either have multiple levels uh, it's totally up to you but uh, just for this video I've just got 10 spaces uh, to work with so how do we get our villagers into this trading hall well it's that module over there and so I guess we'll start at the very beginning. Let's start at the villager breeder. Now, I'm not going to talk about villager breeding uh, in detail in this video, uh, but uh, there's a couple of videos you can go to to check out uh, some more stuff about that. So first of all, uh, check out Impulse SV. Uh, he did uh, a villager breeder that uses one of my uh, my crop farm tutorials. Uh, so that is pretty cool. And also Rayworks has also got a video out. So there'll be links in the description. So go and check those out. Build up your villager breeder however you need to. And then uh, we can hook our, our trading hall uh, into it right here. So we're going to simulate that by uh, spawning in a baby that uh, doesn't have too long to grow up and what's going to happen here is he gets pushed along by the water and he'll chill out in here in this air block until he's uh, until he grows up and when he does grow up his head is going to be emerged in this water block right here and then he'll swim up into this water which will push him along and he'll end up in this uh, holding cell with uh, all of his friends ready to ready to go to work there he goes and he's going to fall down plop <laughs> all right so once you've got a few grown-up villagers some adults because uh, we do that because we want to separate the two we want to keep we, we just want to work with adults and not get babies confused so what we've got to do now is we come into our little booth here and we stand on this pressure plate that uh, that is going to be important which i'll talk about shortly and we can call a new villager with this button right here minecart comes along picks him up and he's going to fall down here right in front of this workstation now uh, down here you can put whatever workstation you like obviously all of these different workstations will give you a different type uh, different type of villager and of course here we can trade with him so here we have a weaponsmith because we're using a grindstone so the basic idea here is that uh, we can do the trick where we can look at what trade he's got and if we like them then we can do a trade to lock them in if we don't like them we can break this block it will lose his profession as you can see there and then we can put it back again he should gain it again and then we can do another trade because you'll have some different uh, some different uh, trades right here. So keep doing that that cycle of breaking and checking until you're happy with the trades. And then we need to do a couple of things. So first of all, we're going to name him. <laughs> we're going to name him Missy. And uh, then we're going to trade with him. So let's uh, let's have a go. Let's uh, let's get a sword. There we go. And that is enough to lock those trades in place. And he's named, ready to go. So now what we need to do is uh, we need to make sure that over in our trading hall over there, uh, the next slot has got the same workstation. So I've already done that. There's already a grindstone over there uh, in the next slot that's going to be taken. And then we press this button to send him off to the trading hall. Off he goes. And if we watch him, we should see that when he gets to the end, he gets he jumps out and he lands over there in the next slot. And here is our guy. Here is Missy uh, in the slot, <laughs> ready to go. So uh, yeah, in front of him is the uh, is the grindstone. Now one one important thing is it's worth putting a piece of carpet on the top of these blocks that aren't full blocks uh, because that might uh, that might come in handy later. But I'll show you that in a second. So what we need to do now is we want to work on his discounts. So uh, if we flip this lever, he's going to drop down, and underneath we have a zombie who can track him. So there he is. So we use his half slabs to make sure the zombie can see, and he's going to walk past all these villagers, and he's going to start attacking this guy. He's going to turn him into a zombie villager. There he is. Now we can flip it back up again. And now we can convert him. So we do that by clicking this button, which gives him a weakness potion. And now we just need to get some golden apples. And if we give him one of these, he will start converting. All right, so when he goes back to a villager, he will then be a converted villager and that will give him discounts. Now on top of that, if we do that for all of these villagers, they'll all get discounts because of that curing. Uh, but also because these villagers can see each other, they can also share gossip and that will also affect uh, their trades as well. So uh, yeah, see these guys, they're talking away. They're having a good old gossip. They're sharing uh, sharing the good news that we are a good guy. We are curing them, even though we kind of, uh, well, put them in that position in the first place, but they don't know that. So that's how we get down the, our, our, our trades as low as possible. He's now been cured, so let's check out his trades. 
he can, there we go, he's got some discounted trades. Now what we can do is, um, if you want to get these lower, we can actually convert him again. So let's drop him down. And I'm sorry, Missy, but uh, you're gonna have to be, <laughs> be converted. And this is why we've got the carpet on the top, because sometimes you see how he gets knocked back. Sometimes for these these uh, these uh, um, blocks here that are not full blocks, they can end up, uh, these villagers can end up standing on these blocks right here. So yeah, the carpet just keeps them into place. And now, uh, yeah, we can do the Alcurian again. Weakness potion, apple. And let's see what his trades are like once he's converted. And Missy has been cured one more time. So let's uh, check out the trades. And you can see now they've gone all the way down to now. This sword that was 11 emeralds is now only one. So uh, yeah, you could do that again. You could you could cure him again if you like. Try and get the discounts even further down. But yeah, so that, that is a me the mechanism we use here to get the discounts as low as possible. So let's get the last guy in. So there's one more slot here. It's got a smithing table on the top. So let's get another villager down. And the first thing to do is to get the right workstation down. So let's put the smithing table down. That's the one we've got in our last slot. And let's call the new villager. Here he comes and he should uh, pick up the trade uh, from this one. There we go, he's got the profession. And uh, let's just imagine that we like that trade just to uh, get, get things moving. So let's name him. Let's call him the party on dude. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so we've, we've uh, let's, uh, let's lock his trade. So let's go into him. Let's uh, do a trade for one of the things. So we've locked this trade. So now he's locked as, as that profession. We've named him. And the reason we name him is because we don't want him to despawn uh, when we do the conversion from a zombie. So that's, that is important to do. And now that we've done that, we can send him off on his way. Now, the reason why we stand on this pressure plate, and we can watch him go and land on the last, in the last slot. There he goes, he's in, good. So the reason why we stand on this pressure plate is to raise this block up behind us, and that is to make sure that as we're breaking this block and placing it again, uh, the villager that's here can't uh, can't pathfind and uh, and pick a workstation outside of this area. So this is just to make sure that um, we control which, which point of interest, which workstation the villager receives, because they have to be able to pathfind to it uh, before they can uh, before they can choose it. And here is the party on dude in his slot together with Missy and down here at the other end, they've also got their friends, Bill and Ted and Rufus. <laughs> <laughs> so now this is all filled up. Uh, we've got no more spaces for any more villagers, uh, but we have uh, another system in case another villager ends up getting sent into the system. So let's grab another one just quickly and let's send him on his way and let's see what happens to him. So there he goes. He's going up there, but he's not going to get ejected and he's going to come all the way around here, all the way back down here. We have this little, uh, this little uh, safety mechanism here and you can see he gets ejected onto that block and then ends up in the, in the fun happy sauce right there. Now, uh, you don't have to do that. Uh, you don't have to kill the villagers here. We could we could, uh, we could could set this up so they get deposited back over here into this cell right here. I'll just move that over here so it's easy to see. Now, how this works is the rail, as the minecart comes along, it goes onto this activator rail, which will eject a mob. And if we're going in this direction, uh, mobs always get ejected to the right-hand block next to it. So the, the, the villager gets ejected onto that block there. And then the minecart continues on, uh, hits this activator rail, which will depower this torch, which depowers the piston. Uh, releasing the block and so the villager falls down into there so yeah if you wanted to keep those villagers we can just set this up a little bit over here on top of this instead and then the minecart continues on its journey hits this cactus goes into these hoppers and then ends up going back down here ready for uh, picking up the next villager and the last thing to talk about is what should we do if we want to swap out one of these villagers? Let's say you want to change out for a different profession or just get a different villager in here. Well, what you can do here is probably the best thing to do is to drop a villager down just like that. And then the, the zombie will come along and convert him into a zombie villager again. And then once that's finished, we can raise him up. This takes a couple of hits. There he is. And now we can kill him just like this. And now that cell is now totally reset, ready to go for the next one. Now the reason we do it that way is because if we were just to kill the zombie, uh, kill the villager, sorry, before we converted him, uh, there'd be some gossip being shared that we da we damaged the we damaged the villager, and that would raise the prices of our trades, and that is what we don't want. So that's the way to get to get a villager out. Uh, pretty straightforward, and uh, just make sure you don't hit any of the other villagers nearby because that will affect your trades. And that is the demo for how this uh, villager trading hall works. Now, the next thing to do is to go into uh, each of these modules in detail, show you how to build it and talk about some details about how it works. Now for this part of the tutorial, I've got a whole bunch of things uh, built up as you can see over there. And I'm not gonna do like a block by block tutorial uh, based on that design we've already seen because chances are in your base, you're gonna have different spaces, different constraints. And so instead I'm gonna show you each of the different modules, show you how they work and some options that you've got so you can you can bend this uh, bend this design uh, to, to what you need in your world. So let's start off with how we're gonna transport villagers. So as we've seen before, uh, we can have a, a baby come into a water stream out of our breeder and then we're gonna separate it into uh, babies 
and adults. So this is that setup right here, and this is how you do it. So let's say we have a water stream that comes out over here, and water will, water will spread uh, eight blocks. Now I've got some barrier blocks in here just to make it easier for us to see. So there is the water spreading for eight blocks up to here. And now how you would do, how we build up our, our separator from babies to adults is uh, just at the end of the water stream, we have a sign just like that. And then above the last water block, we have another sign. And now where we've got these two, these two blue glass blocks, this is where we put water sources. So we put one up here, just above, just above that sign. So that gives us an air block in there uh, for the for the babies, and that's what that sign does. And then this is a full source block. So when their head is in this water, they'll then swim up. And now what we need above here is another water source that goes just there. And now we have flowing water on the top, and that's what pushes the adults that way once they've grown up. So we just need to have these two blocks here that gives us this wall where the uh, the babies can't get over until they're all grown up. And then the adults will then fall down this chute, and then you can take them to the next part. Now this setup here kind of assumes that you're only going to be transporting your babies uh, for about eight blocks uh, before you want to get to your your, your salter, your baby to uh, adult salter. Um, but you may well want to transport your babies for uh, a longer distance. And uh, we can use this little trick here with a wall uh, to do that. So uh, what, we, what we need to do here is we need to uh, set this up. So if you have a water source right here, it will travel for eight blocks up to this block right here. And then we just need to do this little setup here to continue the water where a baby will uh, will keep will keep swimming all the way along. So how you do that is you add a wall at the end, a sign above it, and then the water source is going to go above that sign. And then we have another sign on this side to keep the water in place. So it flows, it flows that way. So let's put these in again. I'm using some barrier blocks here just to make it easy to see. So there is a water source right there, flows along to the end and another water source just like that. And then uh, also uh, because we're now moving up upwards, we need to have our wall a bit higher. Uh, on these all these other blocks, we've got a too high wall to keep the baby in place so we can't get out. But up here, a little bit higher. Now let's spawn in a baby just so we can see what happens. So he swims along, and you'll notice that when he gets to this wall, he gets pushed up a little bit, and his head goes into the water. There we go, and he continues swimming, and off he goes like that. So uh, if you want to transport your babies for a longer distance, just repeat this over and over again uh, at the end of each uh, each of the water streams, and yeah, you should be good to go. And now that we can sort out the babies from the adults and our adults will end up falling down this chute. Now, of course, uh, like I did in our demo previously, we could just store these right here uh, without any uh, without anything additional. Uh, we could have some more water streams to push them somewhere else. And of course, if we need a big, bigger drop, you don't have to have it straight away. Uh, if you want to have a bigger drop of uh, the adults coming down all the way to here, you can uh, soften their landing with the water source just like that. So if I uh, place an adult right here, who he falls all the way down and he falls through the water, so the water cushions his fall, and he comes down here and doesn't take any damage. So if you want to have your uh, your holding cell a long way away, or underneath uh, from your, your baby separator, then uh, yeah, just need a water source here to break the fall. Next up, let's talk about how we're gonna pick up our villagers out of our holding cell and get it into our system. So we're gonna do that with the power of minecarts. So this uh, this glass structure here, this is our one by one where our adult villagers are gonna end up once we've uh, filtered them from the babies. And uh, yeah, what you need to do now is need to build this structure underneath it. Um, so I've used these uh, these concrete blocks here to make it easy to see uh, how many blocks you need and in what position. So just copy that down and you should be good to go. Now, the only tricky thing here is just to do the, the rails in the right way. So let's do that bit together. So. Underneath here, diagonally down from this block, we need to have a dispenser, just like that, and that dispenser is full of minecarts. Now for the moment, I've got a button just on top, but we'll talk about that uh, in a bit more detail later. So what you need to do with the rails is put a powered rail right here and right here, another one here and here, and you should see that this, this one goes up into an angle just like that. The next one to do is to go into the uh, the holding cell where the, babies, where, the, uh, where the villagers are and put a rail just like that and then break it again. And now we can see that we've still got our angled rail from before just here on this side and we've got another one here just like this. Now uh, what's going to happen is the, the minecart is going to come up that rail onto that rail and then along here and then it's going to fall into this space and land just down here. So let's put a powered rail right here and then two more on this side and then put a normal rail just in the middle just like that. So let's uh, let's get some power onto this into the situation. So we need a button right here. So when the when the minecart falls down here, it's going to land on this powered rail and wait there. When we press this button, we're going to power this this rail, and then it's going to shoot this way uh, off into our system. Uh, we do need a bit more power on this side though. So let's get uh, let's get a lever and power these two ready to go. And also we need to power these other rails that are on top. And just need one lever just here, and that powers all of these rails because they're all uh, they're all attached to each other. So let's give this a quick test. So if you press this button, it should dispense a minecart. It goes up there and it falls down on here. So then we can just press this button and it shoots off and goes off into our system. And we can test this with uh, with a with a, a villager just to make sure he actually gets picked up. And if you press that button right here, it goes up and goes down just like that. Now you can see there that the the, the villager comes through these blocks 
And so it's important for these to be transparent so it doesn't take any kind of suffocation damage. Uh, so building this out of glass is a, is a good idea. And just for completeness, because sometimes rails can be directional, uh, in this case it's not. So these, these rails go north to south, and I've also set up the same kind of rail system just here, going east to west, and it all works just fine. So we shouldn't have any kind of problems, uh, whichever orientation you build this in. And here we have a very similar setup. Uh, I've just used some different uh, different sizes uh, just to show you the flexibility that you've got here. So we've got uh, some extra distance here on this side, some extra distance here, and also some more full some more full distance. Now, when a when a villager is inside a, a minecart, it won't take any damage uh, when it falls down, so that is no problem. So this shows you've got lots of flexibility in how you build this thing. And in terms of uh, getting your buttons to be wired up. Uh, over here we've got this button here that we sh we sh we've seen before uh, that powers the uh, the rail behind here uh, but this button right here we want this to get linked up to our dispenser so it's very easy to do so just behind it have some redstone that goes along here and as long as that redstone goes into into the dispenser or a block next to it then that will power that uh, that dispenser which will release the minecart and so let's give this thing a test let's go over here press this button you see the minecart comes out picks up a villager he falls down here no problem at all and then we can press this one uh, to get rid of him so far we've covered some of the controls we need inside our booth, uh, but we need uh, a few more. So let's talk about uh, villager pathfinding and uh, their schedule and also how they uh, how they pick a workstation. So if you remember when we should give the demo, uh, we had this uh, pressure plate on the floor, uh, which uh, which kind of lifted this block up behind us. So first of all, let me just show you how to build that. It's super simple. Uh, we've got our pressure plate here, which is on a solid block. And underneath there, a couple of bits of redstone that goes into a sticky piston. And there is our block above. So nice and easy to make. Now, the reason for this is that uh, when we're inside our booth, uh, we don't want the, the villager that's going to be in here. We don't want him picking up any other workstation that might be around in your base. And so if we uh, stand on this, this uh, blocks the pathfinding so he can't get to any other workstation. So when he's in here, he thinks he can only get to the workstation we place down for him. And that means we can control uh, the workstation that he picks and also the trades. And now you might be thinking, why are we using a piston and a block instead of just maybe a door instead? Well, that's because villagers can path find through doors. So let's place down a workstation outside here, outside the door, and we'll stick a villager inside. And you'll see that he will take the profession of that lectern, which is a, which is a, a, a librarian. There he is. So that all works. Uh, that will work. So let's let's try this again. So let's break this and let's stick a block instead, even with an air gap, so we can still see through. Let's place the lectern again and put the villager back inside this booth and you'll see that he won't uh, he won't recognize it because he can't actually pathfind to it and so he's just going to stand around and stay uh, and stay unemployed and now based on this pathfinding uh, one other thing that we should think about uh, especially when we're taking our villagers out of this out of the holding cell and then onto this uh, onto this uh, this minecart track uh, they can still pick up workstations even if they're traveling on a minecart track so you might want to add some walls uh, around this so uh, they can't pathfind to uh, to any to any other uh, workstation uh, so that's just something you might want to think about when you're building up this track now, if you remember when we did our demo, uh, we did the, the trick where you place down a workstation and then we can check the guy's trades, see if we like them. Oh, mending. Mending for 30, a bit expensive. Uh, so imagine we don't like those trades. We can break this. He'll reset to be unemployed. We can place it down again. And uh, when he converts, there we go. We can then check his trades. And you see he's got some new trades. So we can do that over and over again until we get the trades we like. And then we can press the button like we saw in the demo. Now, uh, this doesn't always work. It depends on the time of day. So let's take a look at this. So uh, a Minecraft day is separated out into ticks. And this is how a villager's schedule uh, is worked out during the day. So there we are. There's all the different uh, phases of his uh, of his schedule with the different ticks. Now, I explain all about this uh, in my carrot and, uh, and potato farm uh, tutorial. So there'll be a link in the description for that so go and check it out if you want to see more details about the villager schedule but the important thing here is that uh, if you want to do this cycling of a workstation the only time you can do it is when they're in their work phase which is from 2000 uh, to 9000 so uh, what we can do here is we can simulate that so if we uh, if we set the time to something outside of there so let's set let's do a time set 1000 so that is uh, outside of his work if we break this now you'll see that he won't change his profession he'll keep it he won't lose it and go back to uh, go, go back to being unemployed and likewise if we pick a time that's uh, that's outside of that on the on the other other side so let's say let's say 10000 again if we place down a lectern break it again he still doesn't go back to being unemployed. We can only do it at 2000 uh, uh, in his work phase between 2000 and 9000. Now, if you're playing the game, if you're in survival, uh, it's a bit tricky to work out what time of day it is. Now I do have a data pack that will show you that and there'll be links in the description to my logical crafting data pack. Uh, but uh, one way you can do it is by looking at a clock in the world. So let's set the time uh, to 2000, which is the start of work time. And you'll notice that this clock 
uh, comes up here and this yellow this yellow part here is kind of like a 45 degree angle so that is the beginning of work time and if we set it to the end of work time which is 9000 you'll see that the clock this yellow part here goes up at a 45 degree angle that way so uh, if you want to do this uh, cycling of workstations you need to do it where the clock is between this angle of 45 degrees and this one right here and the last thing before we get into building the trading hall section itself is to talk about the rails a little bit. So uh, we saw it, saw it in a demo, but just to re reiterate here, uh, what we're going to do here is we kind of have our villagers inside our minecart going into our system. And uh, when we build the uh, the trading hall, we're going to have a whole bunch of these activator rails all the way along, where uh, if uh, if there's a mob inside a minecart, when it hits an activator rail, they are ejected. And what happens is uh, if the minecart is going in this direction, the mob is always ejected to the right hand block next to the activator rail. So we can demo that if I get into this minecart right here and press the button you'll see that I'm ejected and I'm inside inside this cell just here like that as expected. At this stage we have a villager in a minecart and he's, has, and he's got a profession and we understand about how uh, mobs will be ejected out of the minecart when we need to. So uh, this is one of the cells and if I just scoot around here you could probably build it from this uh, but we'll build one together uh, shortly and talk about it in a bit more detail. Uh, so this is just one slice and uh, you just put these next to each other so if the workstation is here for this villager uh, the next one will be here and one next to it over here and of course you can add as many of these together uh, as you like. So let's talk about this as we build it and uh, yeah do it step by step. The first stage to build up one of our slices is to build this thing right here. So uh, this bit of concrete here, this is the floor level. This is where you're going to stand on top of this. Uh, so you need a little bit of space underneath, not too much. Uh, so build this up first and then you need uh, to have this sticky piston with a trapdoor on the top. Any kind of trapdoor will do. Uh, we've got an observer here and a sticky piston just there. So uh, from that, hopefully you can build uh, build that just by looking at it. Now there's a bit of redstone dust underneath here, underneath this lever. And that lever is what uh, controls the piston going up and down, which controls uh, whether, whether our zombie can uh, get to our villager or not. Now our zombie is going to fit in this gap right here. Uh, that's where he's going to live. We'll talk about that a bit more later on. Uh, but the next thing to do is once you've built that up is to uh, get some string first of all and place it in front of this observer just like that. And then we need to have uh, some, some slabs. So some slabs next to uh, the trapdoor there and also on the other side, just like that. And then also next to the string like that. And on this side as well, just there. And then some solid blocks next to this observer here and also on the other side. Now that's because when we've got our zombie in here, we don't want him exposed to any sunlight. Um, if you're building underground, then those things are not so important, uh, but just to make sure that your zombie is protected. So uh, we use these half slabs here because when the uh, when the, when the the villager is up in this position, his head is above and he can talk to his friends either side. And when you lower him down, his head is in this slice right here. And so the zombie can see him and it will come and attack him. Next, put a temporary block on top of your observer and then come round to the back and get another observer and face it that way. So the uh, the face is facing this way, the same as that one there. Then put some string in the front of that observer as well. And then what we need to do then is get a half slab and place it underneath the string just like that. And now we're going to encase this with some glass. So we need to go too high with the glass on this side, also on this side and then on the top as well. And then just for good measure, we're going to get a sea lantern and place that on the top. Now this is, uh, so this area here, this is where our mob is going to be ejected into. And we need to have this light source here to make sure that no mobs will spawn in here uh, when we don't need to. Now the string may well stop that, but just to be safe, uh, let's, uh, let's make sure it's all lit up. After that, come around to the back and put two glass blocks behind the sea lantern just there and then one behind uh, the piston. And then we need to have one diagonally there, just like that. And then one diagonally here, just like that. And then get some redstone dust and place it on top of all of these glass blocks just like this and also the sea lantern on the front. Next place some redstone on the top of this glass block right here and then a solid block on top of that. Now that solid block is there because when this uh, because this uh, this slab is going to move and when it does so if this uh, this this villager here is a villager zombie then uh, he will take some uh, damage uh, from the sun through the through the glass block there. So uh, yeah put a solid block on top to stop the to stop the light and then put a carpet on the top uh, to stop mob spawning and then a temporary block here and then get a piston sticky piston and face it down like that under there. And the last part of the build is to get our rails in place. Uh, so let's put them next to this, this uh, half slab just like that. And then on the top, we need to have powered rails on the two at the end, and then an activator rail in the center. And then we need to power our powered rails. So we put a lever here and here and turn them on. So those are powered. And then to power our, our activator rail, because that needs to be powered for it to work, we'll stick a redstone block on the top. And then as an optional extra, you can also put a lamp in the front. And so if this uh, if this lamp is on, that means we have a space available for a villager. So this is now all set up, ready to go. It's all primed and ready. So let's talk about how this actually works. 
And now you need to remember for this thing to work, our villagers are going to, villagers are going to be coming from this direction in their minecart because once they get to the activator rail here, they're going to be ejected to the right, which is this block right here. So they're going to be ejected and land on that slab right there. And as they do that, they'll land inside this string, which this observer then sees. So it will then power this piston through quasi-connectivity down here, and that will extend the piston, grab this block and pull it back to here. Now, at the same time as that happens, um, the villager will then fall down because there's no block supporting them and they will land down here in this, uh, this area right here. So as he falls, he will then leave this string right here, which will then activate this piston for a second time, which, which, which will put the block back again. Uh, he'll then land down here uh, on top of this uh, this trapdoor and he'll then be inside this string which this observer sees it then powers this block which powers the uh, powers the piston which uh, activates this again which pulls the block back again so it's back in this position and the redstone then goes up this line up here up here over to here and then activates this piston right here which will then grab this piston uh, grab this uh, redstone block and pull it up so once the red that redstone block is then up that means that this detector rail is no longer powered and so the next villager will just go along and not be ejected and of course uh, this uh, block is pulled back out of the way and uh, so it's, uh, in, it's not in a, in a state to receive any villagers anyway so that's how that bit works and so then uh, we, if we just repeat this uh, segment over and over again you'll then see that uh, the next one available will be the one next to it and so the next villager along will get ejected into that one so that's how that all works pretty cool huh now the only thing then needs to do is to get your your zombie into this section right here on this block right here now of course you need to uh, fence him in because you don't want him to escape so make sure you put some blocks around and make sure he can't escape and also put some more lighting in here uh, so we don't get any other mob spawning at all and the final thing to mention is that uh, what you need to do now is to place a dispenser facing upwards next to your workstation and fill it up with a splash potion splash potions of weakness and on the top put a button and so what's going to happen here is when you press the button the the, weak, the weakness potion will be ejected up and it will smash onto this block up here and that will be enough uh, to affect the villager that's right here when you want to convert them back from a zombie villager into a normal villager and then feed them a golden apple and that will co complete the conversion process now with these these are dispensers you just need one in between two so you don't need these on every single block and yeah that's about it so once you've done that you've got a system all ready to use and so that is how you build up this villager trading hall. Now I've shown you all of the different uh, modules of this and how it all works. And so I'd, uh, I'd encourage you to not necessarily copy this exactly as it is here, uh, but use that use that knowledge uh, to build it how, as you need to inside your base and um, and use the flexibility in here uh, to, to make it fit your needs. So of course, uh, you've seen how we do, how we deal with the baby villagers and separate them into adults. Uh, you've seen how we pick them up in minecarts. You've seen this booth here, so we can uh, select the right trays that we want, and then we can send them off into our trading hall itself. And you've seen how to build uh, one of these modules and as you can see here just as a quick reminder you just put these next to each other and you can build this for as long as you like now of course at the very end uh, you might want to have this track go all the way around and all the way back again uh, as we had before now this thing we showed at the beginning so you can either do this kind of thing where you get rid of any excess villagers or you can have it this have you or you can have it uh, put the villagers back into here in their holding cell and the only thing here to remember is that at the end uh, you just want to have a cactus on some sand and then some hoppers just here like that to put the the minecart that gets broken back into the system so you don't run out of minecarts so that is about it and now you're here under here don't forget you need to put your put your zombie and he's free to walk around and convert any of these uh, any of these villagers now now, depending on how big you have this you might want to have multiple zombies and maybe have a block in between them uh, to separate them so they have their own their own set of uh, villages to deal with uh, especially if you're going to go around corners that kind of thing uh, so yeah that should do it and i think uh, this will work out pretty well and before we finish up, one thing to mention is that this is designed for Java edition 1.14.4 and above. Uh, it may well work in, in Bedrock, I haven't tested it, uh, but yeah, it's designed for Java edition. And the other thing I should have mentioned that I didn't is that the uh, the villager pickup system there with the rails is actually designed by Unary Bits. And it's quite an old design, but it still works. I'll put a link to that in the description as well. So definitely go check that out. So I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope that this is going to be useful for you. Uh, I'm going to build this in my own world, in my massive Death Star in the end. Uh, in a very soon uh, to come episode of Beyond Logic, which is my single player series. So go and check that out if you want to see me build this in survival. All right, that's about it. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, then please hit the like button. And if you're new, then feel free to subscribe. And if you've got any comments or suggestions, then get it in that comment section. All right, my geeks, until next time, I will see you later.